Millions of Catholics celebrate President Joe Biden, including the Pope and members of his new parish here in Washington, D.C. Still, many question whether he's going against long-held tenets of the faith in favor of a more progressive approach. Faith is what has gotten me through difficult times in my life. No distinction between the values my mom and dad drilled into us and what I learned from the nuns and priests who educated me. Attending Mass each Sunday, rosary in hand, President Joe Biden has long put his faith front and center. They applauded for a fellow parishioner, a fellow Catholic. That positive response stands in stark contrast to the outcry over the beliefs of confirmed Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett, a pro-life Catholic. What do you think is the most dangerous thing about her? Her religion. Her advocacy and membership in organizations that are not only against abortion, they're against the most popular forms of birth control. In the this different standard infuriates many members of the clergy. You see a clear bias being lambasted by much of the media because of her deep, devout Catholic Christian faith. Now comes along President Joe Biden. He's not a faithful Catholic Christian. And many others agree in messages from the pulpits. You might have heard that the president is Catholic. Perhaps you heard that he went to mass on Wednesday. I don't care. <laughs> Since taking office, Biden is targeting rules that protect the unborn, including the Mexico City policy prohibiting taxpayer funds for abortions abroad, which he previously opposed. And changing his position on the Hyde Amendment, blocking federal funding for abortion services. If I believe health care is a right as I do, I can no longer support an amendment that makes that right dependent on someone's zip code. I am concerned because I think there's an agenda. So is Archbishop Joseph Nauman, chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. He fears Biden is using his new title and office to confuse the faithful. The American people have given him a lot of authority and power. But one power he doesn't have is to define what it means to be Catholic. The president even criticized for using religion to avoid scrutiny of abortion policies, reflecting what some believe is a growing divide in the Catholic Church over his presidency. You have very fervent liberals and progressives within American Catholicism and very ardent um, and passionate conservatives in that same movement. Meanwhile, despite the church's teachings, a recent survey of U.S. Catholics found more than half think abortion should be legal at all or most cases. Biden's Christian critics say the most powerful man in the world should take the lead. The church belongs to Jesus. That's why I implore the president Please repent, turn away from this error, and you know it's an error, and be faithful to what the church teaches. And Gordon, to illustrate just how deep this divide in the church actually goes, some U.S. bishops want to deny President Biden access to Holy Communion, calling him his support for abortion rights a grave sin. Well, the bishop of Washington, D.C., which is where the president worships, says he will continue to allow him to receive the sacrament while respectfully pointing out the president's divergence from official church teaching. Well, Tara, how, how does President Biden reconcile the two um, positions? One, his faith and the church teaching, and then his public policies on abortion. Well, Gordon, certainly it's a very difficult thing to do, maybe impossible, because what he has to do is be careful not to alienate all the pro-life Catholics. So what he is essentially saying is, and you heard it in the piece, that while he personally is opposed to abortion, he will not impose his will on others who are not. That said, abortion is considered one of the gravest sins of the church. Their platform, of course, is pro-life, but Joe Biden now a strong supporter of Roe v. Wade, though he once voted in favor of a constitutional amendment allowing states to overturn it and voted against federal funds for abortion at least 50 times. Another way Gordon, it appears, he tries to thread the needle is by categorizing abortion rights as part of reproductive health care and access to it. At the end of the day, though, if you look at all the controversy about his faith on the pro-life side and big outcry within much of the church ranks, it may not be a winning argument that you can balance a pro-choice stance and be a faithful Catholic at the same time. Well, it doesn't seem to be hurting him with the voters. A majority of Catholic voters actually voted for him, uh, despite his stance on abortion. And what's their motivation for their support? 
That is very true. But despite President Trump's pro-life position, there are Catholics who said they would have voted for almost anyone other than President Trump. So a Pew Research Center survey found that 63 percent of Biden voters were more against President Trump than for Joe Biden. Catholic leaders have harshly criticized President Trump for his policies like immigration. As you know, Biden promised to undo them and is already making good on that promise. Biden also appealed to many Catholic voters as a relatively calm and civil political figure who values Catholic social teachings, with some referring to Biden as emotional, open, and even loving. Some Catholics argue that even with respect to the goal of preventing abortion, better health care, financial support for working-class families was more effective with Catholic voters than Trump's pro-life stance. And there are even some Catholics who insist the Church's position on abortion has evolved, although the Catholic Church continues to oppose all forms of abortion procedures, Gordon. Well, let's let's look also at the polling data of U.S. Catholics that show that a, a majority actually support abortion rights. But the archbishop disputes that. Uh, what did he tell you? Well, despite, uh, you know, despite the polls, uh, Archbishop Nauman says that he does not actually believe they are accurate. He says when you survey people and you survey people who do not go to church on a weekly basis, they're more apt to say that they support abortion rights. He says that, um, you know, it's also the way that you ask the question to people. How did you phrase it? Which, you know, uh, pool of people did you ask? But regardless, he is also concerned that whether they vote uh, you know, whether the poll was accurate, whether, you know, it took the right sample. He says many Catholics, you know, don't accept the teaching in this area and that many of the, they are victims of the culture. He points out there's a lot of teaching that needs to be done within church ranks. And there's also concern, not just among Catholic leaders, but Christians in general, that there is not being done enough from the pulpit to guide the faithful on the issue of abortion. Gordon. Uh -huh. Well, Tara, thanks for the insights. You can always get the latest news and more from CBN News by downloading the CBN News Channel app, and we encourage you to do it today. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.